waited with bated breath to hear if taxes would be raised when South Africa's finance minister Ntlanta Nene gave his maiden midterm budget speech. Now that he has hinted at them, we examine raising taxes in an environment where we already have a full-blown rebellion against e-tolls and where profligate spending is a deterrent to compliance. He's got a tough job ahead of him. This is tonight. I'm Bruce Whitfield. Joining me, Kyle Mandy, who's the head of tax technical at PwC, and Azueli Marboza, who's an independent tax expert. He didn't specify tax increases but he did suggest did he not Kyle Mandy that there was 15 billion rand that he needed to conjure up out of somewhere and he wasn't going to be firing up the Reserve Bank's printing presses in order to get it not at all um, yeah absolutely 15 billion rand that he's looking for um, to me it certainly didn't come as a surprise I think it was expected I think what we maybe hoped for that he was going to cut the spending he did uh, cut the spending he's he cut did the spending he did. over the next two and a half years by about 25 billion rand yeah it's more or more, more or less evenly balanced between the, the tax and the spending or tax increases and the spending cuts um, I think what we really hoped for was all be spending cuts but uh, unfortunately not so not a great surprise but it is there how does a new finance minister in a quite politically divided environment pass through tax increases really well maybe that is the best position to be in because at some point you had the the, the tripartite alliance that was united and you'd find that if you are a minister of finance everybody is against your suggestion if you think about increasing taxes perhaps maybe that's what he needed to have uh, the, the tripartite alliance that is not that united so that he can actually have the room to maneuver and increase the tax rates uh, maybe just, just to add to your first question around the, the increase in taxes, there was a statement that was made that um, it is likely that they are going to, to be improving tax efficiencies. And they spoke about structural changes also as well regarding the, 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 the tax system. And that is also hinting that there is a possibility that there could be some increases in, stack, in tax. And I was listening to the, to the, uh, the director general this morning. Um, and I do think that they are going to have an increase in taxes come February next year. Okay, but how big? Uh, right now we've got a marginal tax rate of 40% on earnings over 600 and something thousand or thereabouts, Kyle. You'll know this better than I will. Um, does the marginal tax rate increase? Do the brackets move? How does this work? Well, I think that, that's, the, that's the key to this thing. Is it all very well that we, we know he's going to increase tax revenues by as you say, 15 billion rand per year over the next two years or so. Um, the, the point is, how exactly is he going to do that? Is he going to do it by, by adjusting personal income taxes, or is he going to be more subtle in, do, in, in other ways? The National Treasury has precedent in subtlety. I mean, they, they, the National Treasury moves in mysterious ways. It has been a very effective mover, because we've not seen tax increases in South Africa since when? Post 1994, I don't think we've seen we've, we've seen increases. There's always been a very careful manoeuvring of the budget to give relief or to give the perception of the, relief. Absolutely, what we have seen is base broadening, uh, particularly in the in the corporate income tax side and to a lesser extent in the, in the personal income tax side, and that is why we've been able to see the the relief in the taxes over over that period of time. But with growth now scaled back from 2.7 down to 1.4 percent, there is no more room for broadening. Jobs aren't being created, people aren't earning higher salaries, certainly not much higher than inflation unless you're in the civil service. Um, so we, we face a scenario where middle class South Africa is probably going to get hit hardest, really. Look, I think the best way to increase tax is to increase productivity. Because, I mean, the more productive the country is, the more revenue that is generated. And when you increase the revenue that is generated, then you can have more tax. The other point that I just want to comment on, I know that there was um, royalty mineral tax that was introduced. This is about four years ago now. And that is not generating much because I think that the projections for 2015 February, that is going to generate up only about 6.8 billion. So I think the focus should just be on expenses. Yeah. to say uh, how but, can but, we but cut expenditure but we know it's not going to happen i mean there's there's also a political opportunity here for the finance minister to get the populist stamp of approval in a more left-leaning zuma cabinet probably the biggest left-leaning uh, cabinet south africa has ever seen um to give the rich a bit of a blood nose look I, I i think that it depends who you ask because i mean if you're talking to the rich they'll say look that is the biggest planner that you can make to increase the taxes for, in the hands of the rich because you're already sitting at 40%. The possibility is that sometimes when you increase tax rates, 
you are increasing the incentive for, pe for people to look at all these kind of structures that you don't want to... Because they can afford it. Yeah. yeah. They can afford it. And it's a compliance issue. So here we've got uh, the finance minister talking about tax increases in an environment where he's facing the, possibly the biggest rebellion in South Africa since 1914 when Christian de Wett took the Buddha off to Namibia. Um, that was a long time ago. Um, but, but we've seen the e-toll rebellion where people have just simply refused to buy e-tags. And all the PR and all the threats and all the cajoling and all of the roadblocks in the world have said, send me a bill and I'll pay my e-tolls. They've got the postal strike and uh, nothing is delivered. And as a result of that, South Africans feel quite emboldened. Kyle? No, look, the, the, there's no question that they do. And, and I think the, the, herein lies the danger in terms of cherry-picking certain statements that he's made in, the, in that budget policy statement. Um, he did allude to, to progressiveness of the tax system, and if you latch on to that point, you're going to he's think, got to speak oh, English. He's speaking tax. He's speaking your language, not my language. So, so translate what he actually said. Well, when you're generally talking about progressiveness, you're talking about, well, the wealthy pay more and the poor pay less. So if you're going to latch on to that point, you're immediately going to think, oh, you're talking about increases for the wealthy and so on. But uh, the point that uh, a lot of people seem to have missed with this budget was that he was talking about balance. And maybe it's worthwhile actually reading for a moment what he actually said in the budget policy statement, if I may. Please, please do read it and then translate it for me, because I read it and I'm yet to translate it okay. in your way. What it actually says is government's proposals will balance several policy objectives. These include enhancing the progressive character of the fiscal, fiscal system, so what we've spoken about now, improving tax efficiency, and realizing a structural improvement in revenue. Then the short and long-term implications for economic growth and job creations will be a key consideration. Now, that now is what does all of that mean? That is not English. <laughs> no, it's not. And, and this is why it's quite important if you've got some context and yeah. insights into what, what he's talking about here. He, remember he did say that uh, these reforms will be based on the, on the uh, recommendations made by the Davis Committee. Yeah. Now, we haven't seen those. And we're not going to see them because they're not obliged to publish them. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we might see them uh, if the minister decides that they yeah. should be made public and get public comment on them ahead of the, the budget next year. Um, but bear in mind, there has been a public consultation process that, da that the Davis Committee has engaged on. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people like uh, ourselves have been involved in that process and have made inputs into them. So we do have some inkling about where they're going. Translate the line then for me. What does it actually mean? We, 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 will, we will be more efficient, as Welly suggests. We will cut expenditure and we will put a, s a smaller burden on an already overstretched tax base as it stands at the moment. Yeah. So, so when the minister talks about in, in you know, looking at structural in, you know, improvement in revenue. I think we need to take a step back and look at what the situation was pre the, 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 the global financial crisis. At that point in time, South Africa was relying to the extent of 25% plus for, on corporate tax or revenues. Um, that has since fallen to about 20%. Okay. The problem is uh, when you look at global averages in that regard, uh, OECD average for reliance on corporate tax revenues is around 10%. So South Africa is actually over-reliant on corporate tax revenues, and that places us at risk in, in uh, when we face an economic crisis, Absolutely. as we did. So uh, are we getting tax increases or not? Yes, we are. Okay, yeah. so uh, I was right. No, no, the, the minister, <laughs> no we are. Uh, as I said, the issue, though, is precisely what are those, how are those going to be packaged? Yeah. What are they going to look like? Uh, what, what do you suspect they will look like, Sweli? Well, at this stage, I think your guess is as good as mine. Um, what must they look like? Well, I think the, the, the emphasis should be on, um, on taxing, maybe increasing um, VAT, because it's easy to collect. Um, but the it's, easy, it, it's easy to collect a petrol levy. They didn't do that. They well, well they did not do that yet, yeah. e-tolls instead of that. But I mean, I think the, the politics involved in e-tolls are, are far much greater than the politics that will, will be involved if someone is looking at increasing VAT, except that now you're going to be actually touching the wrong nerve on the Corsato side, you know? As I said initially, I mean, we, the, the, the Tripartite Alliance, you no longer have strong Corsato, you no longer have strong ANC Youth League. But we've seen Corsato succeed in delaying pension fund reforms in the, la in the last week or so. Um, the union groups are still very strong. This is going to be a fight that we've not seen in budgeting probably in the last 20 years. Um, Kyle, how does he do it? Okay. Well, look, uh, uh, what I think he's got to do, and, and, and what, I, what I suspect that the Davis Committee recommendations are, is that we've got to see a shift, firstly, away from 
taxes on income, so cor both corporate income tax and personal income tax, but particularly corporate income tax, to taxes on consumption. Read that. Um, but how politically palatable is that? Because everybody pays it, it and that's it, it, it it's is. fair, but it's tricky. Okay. The key here is that you cannot look at the tax in isolation. You've got to look at a package of measures. Okay? If he's going to increase uh, uh, the take from VAT, he's got to look at providing relief for the regressive effects of VAT. Okay? So in other words, how is he going to do this? He's got to provide relief to the poor. There are only really two ways to do that. One, through Social Security. Yep. And number two, at the low end uh, uh, of, of the personal income tax thresholds, if you like, for, for your low income earners. That's the only way in which you can do it. Yeah. I mean, do, can, we, can we sort of start charging 50% you know, VAT on Lamborghinis and Ferraris? Maybe structure VAT differently where we don't have a flat VAT rate, but on luxury goods, imported goods, you can put a particular VAT rate. And that way you have a great wealth tax, which you can opt into or opt out of if you wanted to. Look, you can, apparently in Europe, you do have countries that are doing exactly that. And I don't know to what extent is that successful. And I don't know to what extent will that model fit, fit in mm. South Africa. Because already, if you're looking at the people who are up there, you, you're talking about few number of individuals. Well, there are 160,000 so, South Africans in the global 1%. And you know, that's all. And they're worth a million US dollars. I mean, and that's a very small proportion to tax very heavily. Isn't that, it? that is very, very small. You see, the other thing that maybe the government will, will be looking at is the whole issue of carbon tax. Yes, I do understand that in Australia they decided to abandon that, but that is not a guarantee that here in South Africa they're not going to consider that. Remember, during the days of Trevor Manuel, he mentioned something about carbon tax. During the days of Praveen, they mentioned something about carbon tax. Perhaps maybe someone is going to bite the bullet and say maybe this is another source of revenue. You but know? ultimately, the message I'm getting from you guys is there will be increases. We won't necessarily see them because they're going to be very carefully structured in the way the Treasury structures these things. We feel uh, we, we, it's basically like being told to go to hell in the way that we look forward to the trip. Um, essentially, that's what is going to happen in next year's budget. They're going to structure it heavily. No, they are. Look, I mean, what, what I expect is going to happen is that we, we might see an increase in the VAT rate. But as a first step, I think what we're going to see is a reduction in the amount of goods that are actually subject to the zero rating, in particular the basic foods. Yeah. Um, that costs the fiscus in the, in the region of 20 billion rand a year. Um, so there's an easy 20 billion rand to collect there by just taking it away. But as I say, you are going to need to deal with the, the, the regressive mm. effects for the poor. I thank you both for coming in, and I'm sorry we don't have more time, but it is a complicated issue. You will see tax increases, that much is pretty clear. Will you know exactly where they've come from? Will you realize immediately? Will it be something as blunt as taking the marginal rate from 40 to 45 percent? Probably not, because that will drive compliance issues, especially if Julius Malema has not yet seen the money being paid back that he's so keen to see paid back by the president. Compliance is going to be the big issue for 2015. Kyle Mandy, head of tax technical at PwC, and Zweli Maboza, independent tax expert. Thank you very much for coming in. Nice to see you both, and thank you for watching. There'll be more tonight, tomorrow. Till then, good night and good tax. Goodbye.